Hello and welcome to the RMI presentation for the first ever South Reconstruction Project. This is meant to be a presentation of signal and materials that will be made available at the September 19 open house, but in an online format for folks who are interested in the material but cannot make it to the Monday night event. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about the network of the project, engagement to date, existing conditions in the corridor, design features, and the proposed design. And we'll also talk about the next steps. So summarizing the project and why we're here today, Minneapolis Public Works plans to reconstruct about a mile and a half of First Avenue South, which stretches from Lake Street on the south end up to Grant Street on the north end, roughly the convention center. Which includes the replacement of the bridge of the Midtown Green Line and that railroad corridor in the train line. This project will evaluate improvements for all users, replace the aging pavement, and upgrade temporary bike way, which was installed last year as part of the Whittier Lindell Bike Way project. Construction will begin in 2024. The goals of the project are to improve safety and mobility for all people and modes of travel, install an all ages and mobilities bike way. And we'll evaluate opportunities for green stormwater improvements, plantings of trees, and to accommodate property access for residents, businesses, and visitors. So the project schedule as we are wrapping up right now, what we call concept development. Uh, this is where we come up with a general idea of what we can expect to see at the end of construction. From this project, we'll go quiet for most of 2023 as we enter what we call detailed engineering. This is when we decide where do the fire hydrants go, what the manhole covers look like, all these nitty gritty details we'll figure out in 2023. And then construction will start in 2024 and going to 2025. But when we talk about construction, you know, there's the road reconstruction project itself. I, um, as we've let up some of our partners know about this work, there are other entities that are interested in adding on to this work too, as long as the street is open and available for improvements. So, for example, our surface water and sewer division within Minneapolis Public Works has identified that all of the sanitary sewer underneath First Avenue South should also be replaced. So, um, as long as the Dirt under roadway is exposed, they will be making that important infrastructure investment. Additionally, Center Point Energy is likely to be replacing gas line connections up and down First Avenue South as part of this work. Um, that might actually begin as soon as 2023, and they will reach out to property owners individually if that work is part of their infrastructure. And also our water department uh, might be interested in replacing some water line connections to individual structures as well. So even though we have this standalone roadway reconstruction project, we also have a lot of utility providers that want to piggyback on that, take advantage of it. So um, it, it's, it's not just a simple road reconstruction project, although that is the content that we are going to talk about today. So we'll talk about engagement that we've done over the last several months on this corridor. We are currently in the third round of engagement, um, and we've done two previous rounds of engagement this year. The first round of engagement kicked off in February and March of 2022. We are still in a very COVID-constrained environment, and nearly everything that we did to reach out to folks was online. We had a virtual public meeting, had an online survey, and an active map. We did conduct some street interviews, but it was so pretty cold and miserable out. We went through a lot of that. And we have had two open form feedback sessions with Brian Incorporated. Brian Incorporated is located at 1st and 22nd, and there are teachers and staff and students are major users of First Avenue. So, what we heard during phase one engagement is a lot of concern about pedestrian safety. We also heard a lot of concerns about Cars driving through and delivery trucks parking in the bike lanes, which obstructs access. Um, and we hear a lot of concerns from folks about concerns about uh, stop traffic and access to emergency vehicles and delivery trucks. Um, also, some concerns about crash safety as well. In the second phase of engagement over the summer, we did a lot more in person activities including an in-person public meeting, routine and online survey, and map, 
We get a lot more street interviews, which was terrific to catch folks who might not know about a project or be on a new mailing list or participate in neighborhood association work. We also held pop up events at the Colonial Market on Nicollet at the Stevie Square Park. Uh, there was an event, and you know, we participated in one park national night out as well. And again, to so, um, get folks interested in this project who might not be aware of its existence. We also conducted a terrific site visit with Blind Incorporated to talk about how the city designs for, designs for streets for people with limited vision. As part of this engagement, we heard again that safety concerns, specifically pedestrian safety, remain the top priority. There was interest in clear signage, using major physical features to demark and separate sidewalks from sorts of bikeways. Again, concerns about the uh, protected bikeway that also exists today, uh, not in the safe environment, and also concerns about um, traffic backups caused by delivery and emergency vehicles. We also started in the second round of engagement a bit more about green space and the idea that uh, this our traditional boulevards just saw maybe a tree or two are no longer sufficient to meet the needs of clearing our stormwater before it reaches the Mississippi River. That seems to be a positive feature for the folks we talked to. You know, something that came up, you know, in response to a lot of our comments and concerns about emergency access, um, we talked a lot with the fire department about this project. And we did make some changes to this project and proposals based on feedback from members of the public and from the fire department. Initial concepts for this street had uh, the west side of the street being boulevard space. But the fire department recommended, and we agreed that if you put the bikeway next to the street, the bikeway can then become a bypass access for emergency response vehicles. So we have, well, I'll get to the cross sections in a little bit, but we have placed the bikeway adjacent to the street to allow for that bypass. Uh, if the street is congested for some reason, uh, there will be a mouthful curb design on the bus side of the street for emergency vehicles to get onto the bikeway easily. And we've added a foot of width to the bikeway to accommodate the train movements as well. So I want to state explicitly that emergency vehicles are authorized to use the bikeway in order to respond to calls. Everything from sidewalk to sidewalk is in the public right of way. And emergency responders are an important part of the public infrastructure. And so um, they, if they need to, they will mount the curb and drive down the bikeway to respond to calls effectively. So existing conditions today are uh, in need of improvement. Uh, something else that came up during engagement was a lot of feedback along the lines of, oh, the street operates just like today, there's no need to change it. And I want to push back on that a little bit because the street as it operates today is actually fairly unsafe. Minneapolis has a vision zero goal that states that we are trying to get to zero deaths or serious injuries on the roads by 2027. Over the past five years, every year, an average of 12 people are killed, and an additional 147 people suffer serious life altering injuries and travel crashes in the Olympics. Now, I think a lot of people could guess, oh, Lake Street's probably an unsafe street. And it's true. We have this high injury network where we have identified streets like Lake Street that are unsafe. 9% of the streets in Minneapolis see nearly 70% of these severe fatal crashes. And it was news to me. I was very surprised to find out that First Avenue South is as dangerous as Lake Street, and it is just in need of, just as much in need of support to fix it as Lake Street is and other streets in the city. And so, I just want to say that you know, recognizing that the street is going to be rebuilt, it is our responsibility to improve it and not to reinforce these conditions that make it unsafe today. So some of the design features that we plan on incorporating into this roadway project in order to help with those safety needs. Widening the sidewalk, adding the, uh, adding the protective bikeway, a sidewalk height behind the curb, putting bump outs at intersections, 
and we'll also evaluate the opportunities for raised crossings. It's a little too soon yet in the design process to say where we could put a raised crossing of what the um, physical space would look like at these locations, but it's something that we're going to be advancing into detailed design. Of course, we'll be widening the boulevard where possible. Some places along First Avenue South, there isn't a boulevard at all, entirely concrete or asphalt surface. Adding water quality infrastructure, some native plantings that allow water to be treated through filtration before reaching the Mississippi River. Upgraded street lighting and upgraded traffic signals. So now I'll go through the proposed designs. Um, Several blocks along the corridor are similar, some of them are different. Um, if you're watching this at home, I recommend that you just pause the video at the segment that is relevant to you and you can take a look at it. Otherwise, I would go pretty quickly through these slides. Certainly pause them to be for your convenience. This segment is actually from 31st Street to Lake Street, while the reconstruction uh, project ends at Lake Street. The two way bikeway would then end at Lake Street, and that was deemed to be not ideal. And so we've got a paint and ball treatment south of Lake Street just to 31st for the transition from a one way northbound bikeway and can be made to a two way bikeway. Uh, from Lake Street to Midtown Greenway. Uh, this is a cross section of the main Midtown Greenway Bridge as it is. It exists. From the Greenway Bridge to Cecil Newman. From Cecil Newman to Twinville. And then there's a few slides here of 28th to Franklin, but the existing on the left, the proposed on the right. And then here are some call out boxes of the improvements on each block section from 28th to 26th, from 26th to 24th, and from 24th to Franklin. I should also note that Franklin Avenue will be reconstructed as part of the Henson County project starting in 2025. They will be rebuilding from the Bay Lake Street Chicago. Here's the cross sections from Franklin to I-94, from 15th to 14th, and from 14th to 15th. Again, this project essentially formalizes the temporary bikeway that was installed as part of the Lindell Bikeway project. And it's part of our all ages and abilities. Uh, there was improvements made to Blaisdell south of 28th last year on um, so a long term basis, and also some improvements from 28th itself. But the paint and ballers on First Avenue South will be replaced as part of the full reconstruction. So timeline and next steps. As I mentioned, we're finishing up concept development now and we're going to be back on the proposed designs uh, that we just showed on the screen before taking this project a little bit quieter in 2023 for detailed engineering and construction starting in 24, although the center point energy work may start in 2023. We do have an open house on September 19th. Otherwise, we'd have a self graded blocking tour on such a pinpoint as QR codes uh, with questions for you to answer. Again, my name is Katie Hyde. I'm a senior transportation planner and the bus public works. You can email me at the email address on the screen or call or text me at 612 283 Thanks so much.